Hey love, Shantara Carpier here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so excited to have you. As you already read in the title, today's video is how to make a setting line shower cap. Now, all the materials that you will need for today's tutorial will be down below in the description box. There will also be timestamps in the description box. But without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. The very first thing you want to make sure you have is two pieces of fabric one cotton and one satin or silk if you choose so i just unfolded my fabric so i can show you guys how to fold yours the correct way for today's video i will be making an every size adult shower cap so with that being said i ended up folding each fabric three times So the next step is to go ahead and take your second fabric and fold it three times as well, just like you did the first one. And then what you want to do is just to sit both of the fabrics on top of each other, making sure that the folds and the open edges are on the same side. Okay, love, so the next thing you want to do is just to go ahead and choose whichever bunny pattern that you want. For those of you who don't know, I do have a video on how to make a bunny pattern as well as a blog post on how to make the bunny pattern. So if you guys would like to pause this video and check that out, you can. But the second thing you want to do is to have some vinyl fuse. And I picked this up from my local Joann's. The full name will be down below in the description box. So the essential part of this vinyl fuse is to go ahead and make our cotton fabric waterproof. It also comes with detailed instructions. And those are the instructions I tried to follow in this video. But you guys will see in a second. I did kind of do my own thing. This is my second time making a shower cap. So from experience, I did try to switch up the directions a little bit just so I can get a better outcome. So unfortunately, the downside to this product is that it is only 20 inches wide. So with that being said, we can't really fold it like we did our fabric. What we're going to have to do is basically cut out two half circles. So what you will need to create your two half circles is either some craft paper, some bulletin board paper. In my case, I am using gift wrap paper from my local Dollar Tree. Um, if you guys have checked out one of my more recent videos, you guys will also know that you can also use this $1 gift wrap paper to do a DIY backdrop for YouTube videos. So if you're using something that is normally stored, rolled up, you will have to use something heavy to lay it down. Um, this can either be like a shoe, this can be a water bottle, this can be whatever you have in your home that is heavy enough to just lay the paper down. So when it comes to cutting this paper out, you want to make sure that you're using regular scissors and not your fabric scissors. This is because if you choose to use your fabric scissors, then you may risk dulling your blades. Okay, so I know you guys cannot really see my full sheet of paper. So what I decided to do was take my tape measure and write out the dimensions. And what I came up with was 28 for the length and 27.5 for the width. So the next step is to go ahead and fold your gift wrapping paper two times this time instead of three. Making sure that the folds match up with the outside of the bunny pattern, make sure you go ahead and place it down on top of the gift wrapping paper and pin it down. After this, you want to go ahead and take your paper cutting scissors again and go ahead and cut around the bunny pattern. Go ahead and take your pins out and this is what you should come up with. So the next step is to fold your gift wrapping paper in half and then go ahead and pin it to your vinyl fuse. After you pin it to your vinyl fuse, go ahead and take your paper cutting scissors again and cut around the gift wrapping paper. After you cut the first sheet of vinyl fuse out, you will have to repeat the step because this is a half circle. Now, when I went to my local Joann's, I did ask them for two yards, but I also asked them to split it up in half. So it really is your choice whether you want them to give you two yards in full or two yards in half. After I cut out both of the half circles, I did go ahead and place them both on top of each other and I pinned them together just so I can go ahead and cut around them to even them out and make them identical. So 
So after this step, you guys can go ahead and fold your half circles in half and then you can go ahead and place them on top of your fabric so we can cut them all out together. Now, if you guys are familiar with any of the bunny tutorials on my channel, you guys will know that this is essentially the same thing. Um, basically, the vinyl fuse will take place of the bunny pattern and all we're doing is pinning it down and then cutting around. Now, I'm not going to lie, it was kind of hard to pin through everything being that I had two fabrics that were both folded three times and then I had the vinyl fuse. So, I did end up using a gallon to go ahead and hold it down. But what I didn't know was that the gallon was leaking. So, you guys will notice a little wet spot or whatever. But also, this vinyl fuse is supposed to make it waterproof. So, I didn't think much of it. I just grabbed the towel, cleaned it off, and then I proceeded to do the shower cap. All right, so now you guys can go ahead and unfold your fabric. And then on the vinyl fuse instructions, it says to go ahead and preheat your iron to a medium heat setting. But I preheated my iron to a synthetic setting. It is one of the lower settings on my iron. And then eventually, I rose the temperature up to silk. To get the vinyl off the contact paper, all you have to do is peel it back like a sticker. You will place it down like a sticker as well, and this may take some time, so please be patient with yourselves, and also try to cover as much fabric as you can. Now, also keep in mind, guys, you do not want your steam to be on, so if you have to, please take the water out your iron. Just like with regular heat transfer vinyl, you do not want the steam on because it will leave steam holes inside your fabric and the vinyl. The end of step two says to go ahead and smooth the vinyl out with your hands. This is how much fabric I was able to cover with the vinyl and with the excess that's hanging off, I just took my scissors and cut it away. So with this step, I did not follow the directions on the vinyl fuse. Um, it says to go ahead and place the shiny side down and hold down for 8 seconds at a time. Now, I tried to do that the first time, but it did not come out right. I found myself having a lot of steam holes and a lot of prints of the iron on top of my fabric. So, what I did was I just used my iron as if I was just ironing regular, like ironing a shirt or some pants. So the way I would check my vinyl to make sure that it was secure was by rubbing my finger against the edge just to see if anything would lift or if anything could use a little bit more heat. I did trim away the excess a little bit more and this is how it looks with half of the vinyl fuse on. So of course, to get the other half circle on, you will just repeat the same steps you did before. All right guys, so please make sure that you're again as close to that previous line as possible. You can even overlap it if you have to. This is to assure the whole piece of fabric will be waterproof and not just only the sides and not the middle. So the reason I said do not cut the SS fabric yet is because you wanna go ahead and apply the heat first. Um, the reason I chose to go ahead and do this was because I didn't want to apply the heat and then something ended up shrinking and then I would have ended up cutting off too much. So that is why I applied the heat first and then I cut off the excess fabric. So it may look like I did cut quite a bit of fabric off, which it looks like that to me too. But you guys don't worry, the shower cap is still suitable for an adult. Also, you guys may notice that the edges of my fabric began to roll up. So this is when I decided to increase my heat on my iron. Like I said previously, I started off in a synthetic setting and then I moved it up to silk, but still no steam. If you guys are familiar with my bunny videos, this is the same concept. You want to place both of the shiny sides on top of each other and then just pin all the way around. I did forget to do the last step like the direction say on the vinyl fuse, but as you see, I'm applying the heat right here to the back side of the fabric to ensure double security. And you guys, I am trimming off a little bit more, but don't worry. In just a second, you guys are going to see me measure this thing out and you will know that it is still the same size. I don't know how my measurements got off. Maybe something moved around. Maybe my objects were not heavy enough, but... Like I said before, this shower cap is still suitable for an adult. But 
Again, you guys, the sewing part of this tutorial is essentially the same as my previous bunny tutorials. However, if you guys are new here, first of all, welcome. Please subscribe. Please like, comment, and all of that. But if you guys are new, I want you to know that when you guys are pinning around, you want to make sure that you are leaving at least a 3-inch gap. This is because you guys will be doing two main stitches on your sewing machine, two main straight stitches. And you guys, when you're going around this first time, you do want to make sure you leave a gap. And then the second time, you will not be leaving a gap. You will be sewing all the way around. And this is because we will be using elastic to hold the shower cap together. So that will ensure that you guys will have a little gap in between to insert your elastic now first things first i want to apologize for my extremely dirty nails i was cleaning something before this video i know it looks gross but i am taking my seam ripper here and i'm ripping a couple of seams just because i did make my gap too small and you guys do not want to make your gap too small as i mentioned you do want to make it about three inches that is why i measured it to give you guys the perfect measurement because you do not want to make it too small because in a second we will be inserting the fabric inside out and it will be kind of tough to do if you have a small gap. So this is the process of inserting the fabric inside out and this process does take a while especially since this shower cap is so stiff. It did take me longer than normal. Um, usually I am making a reversible satin bunny so it does not take me as long because both of the fabrics are slippery and in this case the shower cap or the vinyl should I say made it more stiff so it did take a while. Then after this step I did go ahead and iron the bunny because it was really wrinkled after this process. So with this step you guys just want to push the seams to the edge and then lay them flat with the iron and then secure them with a pin. So I think this is by far the most detail I have shown this step and I think it's a perk because the fabric is white that's why it shows up so good and also you guys i really wanted to make this white fabric as a shower cap because initially my mother bought this fabric for me because she's a cowboys fan i am not but she bought this fabric for me to make her a bunny but i was like it's gonna get dirty with ss product and all of that so this method is great for any white fabric if you guys have run into that problem as well so I do have more detailed instructions on the screen for those of you who may be beginners. So if I'm talking too much, please feel free to go ahead and mute me and just follow the directions on the screen and then try to um, maybe come into the video and then hear my audio. If you're more advanced and you're not a beginner, the main thing you should be taking from this step is to sew three, four inches from the edge. Now this does depend on the size of your elastic. So the size of my elastic is three, eight inches. So if you're using the same size as me, um then this would be great measurements for you however if you're not you will adjust it according to the elastic that you have now i also want to talk about how wide my elastic is and it is 35 stretch and 16 unstretched i know i get that question a lot but it really depends if you're not making a bunny that's adjustable or a shower cap that's adjustable then it really depends on the size of the person's head however an average adult size bunny or shower cap uh, is typically about 34 to 36 inches elastic so the very last step after you guys zigzag stitch your elastic is to go ahead and hand stitch the shower cap closed so how i did this i just took a straight needle i threaded it i double knotted the ends and then i just stuck it through but i also made sure that i was really consistent or tried to be at least with my stitches, I did want to make it look more uniform since I was not using a sewing machine. So please be careful with this step and please take your time with this step. And lastly, to secure your hand stitch, you want to go ahead and knot the ends about two to three times and that will complete your shower cap. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope everyone found this video helpful. As always, don't forget to educate, encourage, and empower by sharing this video, especially if you know it can help someone else. And also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!